Oh, you brought it up because you're insensitive. Want to take one mark? <laughs> That is not how I started that conversation. Feels oh, like you it's... said I had captured Chris's dog, Oreo, who I wanted to. And I said I can't fathom having another animal. I The only time I thought about like how I would... Because we were talking about the loss of an animal and how upsetting that is. And it's like I could have a puppy and just start scream crying about the day that that puppy is no longer with me. <laughs> And I saw Hades Town a couple weeks ago and made the whole show about me and Jelly. Because <laughs> the lead was like a ginger man. And I was like, this is like, I would follow Jelly. It's like, wait for me. It was whatever. Sad. I'm, if you know the play, you you might know what I'm talking about. Or, or you Is this, this like a niche play? Or is it, I thought no, this was like, like a, a popular Tony movie. Award, it's a Tony Award winning play. Anyways. Do you think we have theater It files? made me think I could possibly have a puppy again. Well, and that's my problem, is even last night we had a 30-minute ordeal because Shane looked at Uno cuddling with him and said, looked at me and said, we only have five more years with him. Jesus. And then was saying he doesn't know how he'll go on without Uno. And then oh. I just thought, I don't know how I'm ever going to get another dog because, yeah, Uno is my firstborn, and I don't know how to live life without him. What's going on with you? I just feel like I can't really hear much. Oh, like, I can't hear myself. Let me turn you up. Is my mic on? Oh, there we go. Now I can hear. You were just turned down. Interesting. Your headset was turned down. Hmm. Whatever. You don't care about my dogs. I mean, no. I do. I just couldn't even hear you talking about your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> considering what I'm going through with my dogs. <laughs> I know that's why I said it was insensitive, but it was something that happened. And oh, does I think happen. about it all. The, I think about it from the second I look a puppy in its face. It's like, can I handle the loss of you? And the answer is no. No, no I can't. No. And that's why I need a fucking baby. I need a human baby because something has to watch me die. Oh, oh man. Oh. I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that sick and sad? I, I love it too. Like I'll love the baby, but like honestly, I need something to watch me die for once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hello, you guys, and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Home OK. Hello, hello. I hope you're having a fantastic week. My week is starting off much better than last week. Right. Well, you know, I couldn't move last week because my next yeah. situation that you manifested into my life... I didn't manifest it. And, uh, I mean... Well, I mean, it's I see not your, like it's contagious. I'm, like, but I see your skin rashes moving uh, uh, about your body. They're not moving. I see more things happening on your neck. This is a fucking spider bite with a pimple on top of it <laughs> thank you not Choose a rash the other there's not no rash. way it was a spider bite with swear a to god i've never had both. a spider bite and it a was pimple shocking it was shocking because it was fucking both i'm not even kidding because pimples are round they don't get weird fucking like so maybe it was just a shape. spider bite no because i also like popped it well, you're fortunate that it wasn't on your face because I'm still recovering from the scar from the spider bite that was on I my mean, face. I mean, we'll be able to see this for time to come. <laughs> and then, but, and this is my skin fungus. She's been right there. She's contained. She's okay. going nowhere. I'm doing my cream in the morning and at night, and I'll be doing that for another fucking Great. seven days. I don't think, oh gosh, we just have another gross podcast. So Why? welcome to eating your lunch. I, half of our time, we're starting with skin fungus again, the you death of animals, <laughs> and then you have more poop on the fucking no, docket. No, I just was wondering. Uh, well, and it's an act. Well, okay. Honestly, it's a good question, right? Okay. Well, if you're eating, what do you want to do? Have everyone leave in the first three minutes of our podcast? <laughs> I just don't think it's gross. Maybe we should circle back. You don't think it's gross? Shit is gross. Right. But I don't think my pregunta is gross. What? My, have you read the question? Have you ever pooped and not looked at it? That's I my question. Have you ever pooped and not looked at it? Absolutely not. Like, I look every time. Exactly. Could you fathom not looking? Absolutely not. Right. Okay. That's all I was wondering. Because <laughs> the other day I like pooped and flushed and I was like, <gasps> I didn't look at it. You have to know if it was a success or not. Because yeah, or sometimes... Like, do I have internal <laughs> bleeding? Like, was it black? Like, what's it steel? And I didn't look and I was like, I'll never know what's going on inside myself now. That's what I have to do. Like, my whole morning works up to that release. Yeah. And so I have to know if the release was indeed a release. Because sometimes mm -hmm. you'll have the, like, fake outs. Like, in right. mid-afternoon, you'll think that something's happening. And you think it did happen. And you look down and there's nothing. And you think you've been swindled. Right. I mean, I like to look because it, like, tells me how I'm doing. Okay. You know? Also, I got calls from everybody in my family shocked and appalled at the fact that you're a fucking standard. We are not going to start I, this fight again. We're not starting I the fight. We're fathom. not starting the fight. You're wrong. No, I'm literally. It doesn't even have to be. A, you're no, you're so embarrassingly wrong. Disgusting. You're so embarrassingly if you wrong. Say, I thought about that it. That my stepfather. And I want to double down. Took time out of his busy lawyer life to call me because he's worried 
because he wants you to know that standing to wipe is illegal in 13 states. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> it's true. I would like to tell you, and I would like to tell all of you, last time I was like teeter toddying, like maybe I like half stand. No, I fucking the stand. The teeter toddying standing. No, I fucking stand. Like I'm full blown on two feet. Wow, like doubling down on that. Imagine. It, <laughs> no, I, because I tried. I was, I thought, okay, let me see how I could even maneuver this. But if you reach around, you have to have such long arms then you might touch the toilet water it's uh, i mean if you're like a fucking weird ass none of these things are issues none of those things are rich (laughs) well then i would like to sit with you with a a mock poo i would like to see how you do this okay do you look at your poops before you flush chris oh yeah I do, for the most part. If I'm in a hurry, I think I just get out of there. I was with an old friend that I used to live with the other day, and she goes, we used to send each other pictures of our poops. And I was like, don't be telling other people that. You guys did that? You're sick. And I said, I don't remember that. And she's like, you definitely remember that. And I was like, maybe I blacked it out because it was so dark. Yeah, Matthew and I used to send each other pictures of our poops, but it's like, I was like 19. I didn't know any better. I know. Oh, it's not my business to share that. So What? No, it's not my business. That sucks. That's, that's gross. That's like, um, what do they call that when you get somebody to ejaculate? Blue ball? Yeah. Yeah, you're I know. blue balling us. But it's also like, look at me and my self growth. Like, not telling stories I'm not allowed to tell. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have like a moment for me. <laughs> Thanks, girls. Do you want to say something else embarrassing then? Let's make up for the lack of that story with a new one. <laughs> okay. What do you have for us? What happened to you this week? What's going on? What do you I haven't mean? talked to you because you wouldn't talk to me this week, which is shocking because I'm about to be leaving you. Gosh, I wonder. My week was just so boring. Like I just was writing and writing and mm-hmm. writing. Okay. And that's why I couldn't hang out with you. I, like I washed <laughs> I just, my bed sheets. Um, I wish I would do that. I went to Orange Theory. Um, wow. Yeah, I had we, meetings, meetings, meetings. We need to live a little bit more. Like last week when we had lived, yeah, we had lots of stories to right, tell. Right, but we're go- I tried to go hiking with you yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, we're not going to... I do not want to fight with you right I now. I went to Costco on a fucking Sunday and this bitch is tracking me. Of course. Costco on a Sunday, honestly, I Co- feel stupid admitting this, had no idea how fucked up that Costco shit is. on a Monday at 11 a.m. is awful. Costco's no, always awful. this was different. No, Costco it's... on a Sunday at around 3 p.m. hits like a fucking war zone. And that's why they need to offer smaller carts for those who want to be able to navigate better i mean and sometimes it's just like the audacity of the people in that space I will, like do you not feel that this is a packed ass warehouse and maybe you shouldn't stop in the exit two cards wide two yes. cards wide to have like a conversation about like fucking what don't you guys live together i will not <laughs> get go in to the costco fucking alone. car that no, you couldn't pay me God. to go to costco alone i need somebody there to like beat people off right. with me <laughs> beat people off. why do you choose those words <laughs> Get out of my way! <laughs> Team of beater offers. <laughs> yeah, that is embarrassing. Good save with that story. Since we've done nothing this week, I thought I could tell you about how I'm a back sleeper now. <laughs> Always do you ever, a back sleeper. Do you ever change the way that you sleep? Um, I mean, all night. Oh. I'd, be, I'd be tossing and turning all night. So you're not like stomach, back, or side? I'm uh, stomach, back, and side <laughs> all night. I di- I can't do the stomach thing because then your face is smushed to the, to the one side. The way side. I do it is I have my king size pillow that I put from my neck down, and then I can be a, n- a tummy sleeper. See, I feel like tummy sleeping is asking for the neck problems that I want to go That's away. That's why you need the, the support on the neck that doesn't go all the way to the nog. Oh, you so- need to have like a like a different like see this makes sense right well twofold <laughs> i always sleep on my left side because it's best for digestion it's best to get the gas out it's be- it's just the most yeah. comforting for me personally but then with me getting earrings and also my neck issue yeah. i asked the chiropractor when i went i said well how, what's the best way to sleep for your neck and he said a pillow where like your neck is curved and your head's all the way down back so i've been trying to sleep on my back but it's do you have been- that pillow no, but I have I like do. It's pretty awesome. a pillow that I can manipulate enough. It's like a feathery pillow. Nice. I have a, like a Tempur-Pedic firm pillow that I could, that has the little dent in it. So when I am on my back for that period of the night, it's pretty sweet. This is like a geriatric podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We've now left. The squad turns 30. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I went to, I know we've been talking about the chiropractor, but yeah. I had never actually got in cracked before. Yeah. And it's quite the experience. It is. You kind of feel like they're in love with you. And then they hurt you. And then they hurt you. And they shock you with it too. Cause they're like, oh, talking, talking, talking. Stop. 
And you're just like, oh my God, will I ever <laughs> trust anyone ever again? But it did bring sweet, sweet relief. It does. But like, honestly, I scream bloody murder every time. And I'm like, sorry, it's just because I'm scared. My husband hates that I do this. <laughs> well, and I, I didn't realize how many people thought chiropractics were, or it's, uh, it's not, it's uh, holistic you, uh, oh, alignment. No, I'm just saying it's uh, controversial, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Oh, because Some it's people not... don't believe in it. Like, yeah. they say that it doesn't work. But my whole theory with, I, and I know nothing about it. I know nothing scientifically mm -hmm. about it. But why, in my opinion, why wouldn't it work? You're made up of different joints and stuff. When you yeah. break your wrist or a bone, the doctors pop it back into place. Yeah. So how would... This is a little bit different. The joint is specifically a little bit different because they're not like doing x-rays on our bodies. And like we see a different person every time we go in there and they're not like also doing like massage therapy and like all of those things. But I've never understood why people don't believe in a legit chiropractor. Because I feel like yoga is you're trying to do the same thing, yeah, which is like workout aligned. tension in yeah. your body. So I feel like it's a no brainer that it would work. And after it brought me relief, I just believe. Yeah. So. Did you pick up that monthly membership? No. I, that's <gasps> You're the con. so crazy. No, that's the con of chiropractics because I felt this is so, like the cheapest. I felt con. so hard. No, because how are you? It's you have to sign up for three months and then to get out of it, you have to rock up in there and beg to get out of it. And I know you just myself. Say I'm done here. I'm never going to do that. I don't think you can even call. So yeah, you, you have to call. then go have that awkward conversation of canceling something. It's like canceling a gym membership. Yeah. Oh, awful. They want to call and talk about it. And you're like, I no longer want to be healthy. Shut up. Wow. <laughs> I hate that. Wow. So I just bought, and because I felt bad, I didn't want to do the one-time visit. So I said, I'll just buy your four pack visit which see was so much more money buying is yeah so much more money well that's what i felt was the scam of it all i felt like the actual optics worked yeah. but the way that they sold it as if it, my life depended on it when i had never needed it before now mm -hmm. was a little iffy to me i think i needed it before i went though okay which is why i got it and i like i go once a week see and adding another thing to the schedule is just a i mean old. i like it though yeah because i feel i feel bad like i always feel bad <laughs> and it's exhausting because it's you're working from your bed by choice <sighs> it's true no jelly's been enjoying sitting in my office chair so i've been back at my desk but even at my desk i'm like hunched over like neck forward well something that grinds my gears just a little bit yeah what gets your goat <laughs> well as i was driving around this week mm -hmm. fucking sirens in music yeah they're confusing oh, not only confusing enraging also like why it's not a good noise it should be illegal and and it's overplayed the amount of times that sirens are in music and that sounds so realistic time. are insane like i just and then i got fooled three times in the same song because it sounds so <laughs> realistic what's that, that like, saying Woo! fool me once. And I think it was like, oh, I got to pull over. I'm getting stopped. And then I kept going and it got me again and again. And I thought, God, fuck this bitch. You know what? Fuck I, this bitch. You know what I'm thinking? Only you. No way. I'm uh -huh. and there's three no times way. with the same song. It was so A song's realistic. what, fucking four minutes long? Well, max? it gets you though. Cause so just, you're pulling over every minute getting got. It, like you have, <laughs> you have 45 seconds to recover and then they fucking fool you again. It hits in so hard that you just think, <laughs> Wow. And even if I don't believe it, it's still enraging. The man who stands to wipe his ass, everyone. <laughs> I know there's people that are on my side. Yeah, sick fucks. Let's create a divide here. We don't need to. The divide has been made. It's an evolutionary divide. <laughs> All right. I was thinking about this as I was pooping earlier. What? I, I, I'm going to be honest. I pooped in your house, Ryland. You sick and fuck. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You I'm shit in this man's house? I did. And I, I'm sorry. No tact. As I was doing it, I couldn't help it. It was a long drive from Bakersfield. But as I was doing it, I was like, hmm. And I was like thinking about how all of us pooped and the discussion. <laughs> and I was like, how did that? And I like deeply thought about like, I've never Getting thought Getting up about and it letting before. the poop spread all over your butt cheeks. No, cheek. what do you mean? That. You must be dumb. Well, no, when you're sitting you. down, it, well, okay. no, we in, in my the same mind, in my mind, when you're sitting down, your cheeks are as open as they can be. Yeah. And then when when I stand, my cheeks are closed. closed. That's what our our thoughts go to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like there's 
more than two he, seconds. He mutes himself. <laughs> Chris has had enough. Mute. <laughs> There's not more than two seconds f- that my butt cheeks are closed I in the time that I'm standing too much, up. Babe. Like, two seconds too much. All it takes is two seconds. You know. Anyways, does it hurt your feelings? When what? When you send somebody, you don't do this. Maybe Chris, go back off mute. What? Okay. So like, you know how when you're scrolling through like TikTok or Instagram reels and you see something and you're like, oh my God, this reminds me so much of so-and-so. Like I got to send it to so-and-so right now. Like this is our fucking jam. And you send it to them and they go, oh, I've already seen this. Does it hurt your feelings? Because they didn't send it to you? It's just kind of a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's our fucking thing, bitch. And you didn't send it to that's me. That's your thing? Yeah, well, like, you know, that's if I'm what your relationship is based upon. With no, but people? sometimes like I have a friend that I do teen mom with and I'll be scrolling and I'll see some shit about a teen mom on TikTok and I send it to her. She goes, oh, I've seen that. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, our relationship is like so bottoming out for you that you don't even send me a fucking TikTok that, you know, is our fucking thing. And it's been our fucking thing for 20 years. Honestly, wow. when I get six TikTok links from you in a row there, it feels like a chore. <laughs> I mean, you and I don't necessarily have things like that. You know what I mean? Oh, what do you mean? Like we we engage in everything together, so there's not like one specific thing. No, that's not true. Like when I send you TikToks, it's because I think of you specifically. And when I do go and watch them, most of the time I am pleased that I did. They're curated for your pleasure. Thank you. I have but, a for you page from Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> but the point being, like, there are some people where like one of the core pillars of your relationship is a thing, and you can see it online, and you send it, and they're like, yeah, I saw that. Or it's like something new is happening. For example, Farrah Abrams' mom is a fucking rapper now, which I didn't fucking know until I stumbled upon it. And I send this girl the TikTok and she goes, oh, yeah, I knew that. (laughs) You didn't think to pick up the phone and call me? (laughs) Like, you didn't want to send me a link to this? I seen that. What, bitch? I couldn't see this for two seconds and not send it to you. Obviously, this relationship is fucking over. (laughs) There's no real love there. <laughs> Anybody else hurt that way? <laughs> am I taking this way too personally? You're taking it too personally. I don't think I am. Although, you know what has gotten me? <laughs> what? The wiggle wiggle. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel compelled to do that uh, one for some reason. Do you want to learn it today? <laughs> Almost, Let's yeah. get Dole Whip and do it! <laughs> you want to do it with our Dole Whip? Fuck yeah. With the, We could each have two in our hand to do the wiggle wiggle, yeah. and hopefully the Dole Whip will sway with us. Oh my God, let's do it. It takes me a long time to learn a TikTok dance. Me too. So I'm, be prepared. I'm, you know, I'm not the most. So we have to rehearse without the Dole Whip, so that the Dole Whip doesn't melt while rehearsing. Yeah. Oh. Am I standing on my own headset? <laughs> couldn't couldn't address my head. And there are certain times where I have been thankful for TikTok specifically. Like when you sent me the TikTok of Kendall Jenner cutting the cucumber. cucumber. Yeah, that was absurd. There's no other platform that that kind of content of somebody reacting to her cutting a cucumber oh, would exist. And it did bring upon a lot of joy. What kills? Just, me, yeah. Well, well, I was gonna say what kills me the most is her being like, "Don't film me. I'm like bad at this." I just love, and the whole time Chris is like, the chef can do, the chef, Kendall, the Kendall, chef. Kendall, watch your fingers, The chef, Kendall, Kendall the chef. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> Jesus. God, I want to just live in Chris Jenner's guest I house. I want a chef for my husband. Every time that motherfucker cooks, it's like, uh. Should we drag mold. our husbands again? You know, I don't want to because I'm scared he's going to catch wise. <laughs> and I feel like it's toxic that like every week I'm like, listen to what this fucker did and it's like we are so close to our one year anniversary that like maybe i should stop complaining about him so publicly okay well i'll do i'll complain about shane in a loving way yeah 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 you know what here's what i love he looks like what we love about them so much right like so like i personally love that my husband goes to sleep at four o'clock every morning and wakes me up when he comes to bed and then when i wake up at a decent hour like 8 30 in the morning he thinks it's absurd and that i'm being inconsiderate are you banging pots and pans at 8 30 in the morning who fucking cares if i am it's a monday <laughs> you know what i mean what the fuck and, and that's, that's what i love about joe <laughs> i love a lot of things about him that's one of them we are the same in our relationships that we're both like going to bed at a reasonable normal hour yeah. which i've been trying to convince shane our whole relationship that Me the time too. i go to bed is the time america goes to bed yeah. and he goes you're wrong I know that you're wrong. Like Why, people are you, up, watch, and I, I go, no, I'm not wrong. Like the world wakes up and goes to work, and they go to bed yeah. between ten and eleven or eleven thirty p.m. Yeah. Chris, what time are you going to bed? Don't ask fucking Chris. <laughs> Chris is a part of the problem, and he's gonna totally ruin everything for us. 
<laughs> truthfully i'm part of the problem and i go to sleep very late but i st- i agree with everything that you just said that the majority of people like there's a reason why when i'm up late at night everything's closed you know what i mean because yeah, like most people are at awake. least you can like a normal person admit, admit it. that yeah. yes th- y- there are night owls yeah and i'm shane's productive at night so i'm not there's yeah. nothing wrong right it's just he can't even admit that that is the norm that is what happens yeah and i was saying like i had always romantic romanticized before getting in a relationship the image of Oh my a, gosh! A cohesive schedule. I'm gonna get in a relationship, and we're mm-hmm. gonna be standing next to each other, brushing our teeth, looking yeah. in the mirror, mm-hmm. and then we're gonna jump in bed, have a little cuddle, kiss, watch like <laughs> a 10 minute YouTube video, debrief on it, <laughs> and cuddle. say goodnight, and spin yeah. to our sides, and just go no, to bed. Instead, I get someone kicking me off their side of the bed because I've moved on to it because they're never there. <laughs> and when Shane comes to bed, it's too dark for him because yeah. he can't see anything, so he turns on his fucking phone flashlight <laughs> to the brightest capacity that it goes navigating his way no, through the room that's no. pitch black and i'm like shane what are you doing and i'm like can you at least point it uh, like opposite like if you need the light can you at least just point it downwards yeah. or can you adjust in the bathroom for a second before walking into the room and he's like i'm pointing it away from you obviously you're not <laughs> obviously you're not because it's violently waking me up and then i yeah i confessed to him the other day i was like don't you ever just wish that we could go to bed together and he goes you don't want that and i said you're right <laughs> yeah i rip most of my ass during the hours of fucking like nine to 12 and i like to sneak up and watch my own content for about I like an hour to read. before i go to bed yeah i'm, I'm reading re- in there of course you're reading so sophisticated mm-hmm. She's so much better than me. No, and then also sometimes I'm just watching TikTok. So Joe will come in to like say goodnight and be like, get out. Don't look at me. (laughs) Turn off the light. (laughs) Joe started also doing this weird thing where it's like his muscle memory is to just turn on the brightest lights in our room when he comes in. And then he goes, oh, fuck. And then turns it back (laughs) off. So it's like I'm on the brink of a seizure. (laughs) And then he comes in and he fucking 300 kicks me off his side of the bed. And then like, like screams at me like, oh, God damn it. And it's like, what are you yelling at me for right now? The, that I shoot up in anxiety because of the way you enter the fucking room and you go, oh, calm down. And it's like, what are you, you're scaring the life out of me while I'm dead to the world asleep and vulnerable. Like you literally enter like the fucking night stalker, bro. Like I'm scared. And last night I literally had to say like, hey, um, can you please not shout at me when my reflex is to shoot up gasping in terror at your entrance into the bedroom at night? And then this motherfucker has the audacity to text me this morning and say, I need to be quieter in the mornings. <laughs> After screaming at me for horrifying me when he comes to bed. It's like, I love this so much about him. We love it. We love them so much. No, honestly, like, my life would be boring without. What would we do if we weren't woken up at 4 a.m.? I'd probably not be so fucking depressed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I probably wouldn't be so goddamn debilitated and exhausted the next day. I will admit there's sometimes when Shane goes to bed and then I get woken up and then I can't go back to sleep exactly. and he's ready to go to bed. And I, then I'm like, so what have you been watching? What's going on? You know what I was thinking about when I was going to bed? He's like, shut up. And I'm like, well, well, I can't even talk to Joe because he's like, he gets like livid. Like, I don't even understand what it is, but the dude is fucking mad. And it's like, you are so lucky that you've hit like a really hot point in your life and that you're so fucking attractive. I could never walk away from that ass <laughs> so you watched this is us for the oh i don't yeah good she can segue. <laughs> um i don't watch this is us i know but i did watch the first part of the finale <laughs> lizzie goes i watched this is us for the first and last time and i said it wasn't even the finale which thank god i have to oh my gosh well by the time this is out yeah. it's over oh. i joe I just, I fucking started scream crying. I was like, ah, ah, and Joe comes out and he goes, what's wrong? And I go, this show is so fucking sad. And he's like, turn it off. Turn it off right now. So I only watched the first half of it. He's like, why are you doing this? I was like, I want to cry at something that's not my own life today. I want to cry at something that's unrelated to my own struggles just for one day. <laughs> sad. <laughs> Sad girl things. <laughs> but you know, that's why we're going to get Dole Whip later. Cause I need her like I need to remember why I'm still here, you know? 
<laughs> why I'm doing this. <laughs> Don't want to forget <laughs> what could happen if you And forget. I love that it's that powerful without even having the context of the whole series of relationships. I, yeah, I mean, no matter what, I'm always going to have, I'm always going to scream cry over like the death of a mother scene or like something like that because it's like it just hits so hard. I don't know. I don't do well with death. I do well with everything else. Well, and that's why it's one of my favorite shows because it's a great time to cry. Oh my God. And I get it. So I'm not allowed to watch it at home anymore, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I tell you, the scream crying was like the me scream crying after hitting that bird. And Joe was too. so scared. He's like, he ran down the hall. He's like, what's wrong? Like thinking something's wrong with the dogs, which is like, it totally could be something wrong with the dogs. Doesn't and it feel good to feel something, though? I mean, I feel something every day, but it feels good to feel something that's not about reality. I like, I like, I like. <laughs> I like have convulsions when I'm watching the show. Yeah. It's very, it's a great time, honestly. It's, it's sick. When I had a drinking problem, I used to watch Charlie St. Cloud and drink a blender full of red wine because it was the biggest cup I could find and just cry. And I used to tell people to do it all the time. They'd be like, what is wrong with you? It was a dark week last week. Yeah. What can we say? Are you ever going to, do you want to unpack why you're sad? I feel like you just keep telling people you're scream crying all day on the podcast. It's no, no one's business. Okay. No, I'm just, I did think it was very funny the way it played out last week with no details. You'd be like, no, I get it. I'd be sad if I were you too. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Like, do you want to bring them along at all? No, I can't. This is my safe space. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> um, should we get into some iced tea? Yeah. Do you want to? I think you Did should... we cover everything? Yeah, we did. So. Wow, look at us. Of our non existent lives. <laughs> I really think we need to like get out there and live this week so we have something to report back on. I do be trying to live though. <laughs> okay. Honestly. <laughs> us going to four workout classes a week. Dole whip, bitch. And getting a salad is not interesting. Level up. Level up. Dole whip. Okay. All right. Oh, do you, like before we move on, do we want to talk about the fact that we've seen. Maybe this is part of iced tea. Okay. Let's get into it. Here we go. <laughs> Come along with us. We've only been doing this for like two years. <laughs> Segway. We did it. Um, this isn't on the docket. Do you mind? No. Remember when we were trying to watch Senior Year together? Oh. Yeah. Oh, we can talk about all the movies Should that I could Should we do a movie not... review? Yeah. Of, of all the things I couldn't get through. <laughs> he does like four minutes of every movie and then he's like, done. Well, but he could sit through all of Spencer. Yes. He's yeah. got a dignified Well, palette. the thing is, like, I was excited for senior year. I liked the trailer. I yeah. sent you the trailer when it come out, well, came out. Senior year was the first script I read when I was an intern at Broken Road. Which is the production company that yeah. made the film. So I, I don't even think I got to her in present day because I was so annoyed by it. Honestly, I think I blacked out through most of it, but it was pretty unbearable. And then <laughs> I pivoted and saw The Lost City had come to free. And I watched The Lost City after I watched Senior Year, but you only made it to... I got to... to Daniel Radcliffe and thought, this is too kitschy and not... It, it's not my kind of humor. He I got, didn't laugh once. He literally got to the first sighting of Daniel Radcliffe, which is like maybe eight minutes in. And it's like the point where they're Nothing just doing the expositional... Bull she had been tell kidnapped go... from a book reading that went south because she started abusing fucking Channing Tatum in a really sad way. By the way, the movie was dumb as fuck, but so fun. Listen, I love Sandra Bullock. That sh that Couldn't movie get through it. that movie had some shockingly funny moments. Spoiler alerts for the Lost City coming at you right now. Brad Pitt gets shot in the fucking face and his blood splatters Channing Tatum. <laughs> Pretty fucking funny. Pretty fucking funny. And then another really funny moment is Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum are like running from these bad guys in the jungle and they like make this booby trap where they try to trip the guy on the motorcycle and he fucking flies off a cliff to his death. And they both have a really hard time coming to terms with the fact that they killed someone. Like it's funny. This show is funny. Okay. I might go back and give it a try. It's not. Those are two moments and not like... 120 minutes and then we have a minute before this runs out but then do you want to talk about the other movie you watched i uh suffered through good morning a mod sun and machine gun kelly collaboration and i don't want to talk too much shit because honestly that's the kind of low bar i'm trying to hit for our christmas movie and that's what i'm talking about they made it happen if they can well no well, machine gun kelly's like really popular them. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not as good as those two people. And when I say good, I don't mean talented because I would argue we're more talented than them wow, when it comes you. to storytelling. 
But uh, that movie uh, was so bad that I was watching it with Joe and James and their friend Jake. And I was like, wow, imagine hanging out with these guys in real life. Well, what a fucking nightmare that must be. And we're out. <laughs> <laughs> Time to be, game to be. <laughs> Did you do Mark? Does that mean? <laughs> yes. Oops. <laughs> what are we doing now? Ice tea? Yeah. I. Oh, you didn't put all the things in here. Yes, I might have rearranged them. What? There's more down here. Well, see, last week you acted like you just rearranged them, no. but you left hella out. No, I have them all here. Okay. I thought there was a better, uh, okay. a better way to organize. Okay. They don't need to know this. Oh. I mean, so boring. Oh, cut this out, Chris. <laughs> Taylor Swift receives honorary doctorate from NYU. You act like you're reading this without having known what happened. Taylor Swift received an honorary doctorate from NYU. What does that mean? It means that she's like a, we have to call her Dr. Swift now. Did she get a degree? That's what an honorary doctorate means. Yes. So she went to school. She went to no, NYU. No, that's what honorary means. It's honorary. They're honoring her with it, even though she did not do it. So she has a college degree. She has a doctorate. So she's a doctor. Dr. Swift. I don't believe it. I mean. I, how does this make sense? So something They've that been doing the this normal, for years. The average American this has to This is how they go, do it every time. Okay, but so the normal person has to go to college for eight years and pay yeah. their whole life back so in student loans. So let this be a lesson to you. High school graduating class of 2022, drop out of college get fucking famous, give a speech one time in your life, and become a doctor. It's not like an actual doctorate's degree from NYU. No, like NYU. she can do surgery now. She's a fucking it's doctor. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bring me along for the real facts. Those are the facts. She can't do surgery. It's an honorary doctorate. It's like a lip service, like, hey, thank you so much for talking. Like, you're a doctor too. Like, whatever. It doesn't Why matter. can't it just be like an honorary speaker? She does not get a degree from this. She gets an honorary doctorate. Okay, I think that's awful choice of wording, but okay. That's I think it's, their choice of wording. It I has think been their choice of wording. I think it's degrading to everyone that spent their whole life at college. I don't disagree. Okay. I don't disagree. <laughs> but it's good not, for her. My, it's I'm not, not my policy. I'm not so mad know. at her. Right. I'm mad at the system. It feels like you're mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like you're taking this out on me. And I just want you to remember that, like, I'm not a doctor, nor am I an honorary doctor. So, like, take your beef so, up with Taylor. Was the speech recorded? Was it sickening? What did we get from I it? I thought that the speech was sickening. The I, quotes I read were really cringy. Yeah, people were calling it cringe. But I definitely think that there's a lot of value in what she said. Like, choose what you carry through life because resentments are too heavy and it's a long fucking walk. I mean, yeah, she's... I mean... I don't doubt that she has amazing wisdom. She's yeah. been through enough for seven lives. Why did you say that to me like it was like a really... Why did you look at me like that when you said that? <laughs> the lives. Oh, I you really... were proud of saying lives, right? I was like, that. that's not like a profound quote. And, you just... <laughs> and then I was seeking... You just said the words right. You... Unknown caller. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who is it? I don't know. Should we answer? Mm, yeah. 818, Agora Hills. Just take it. I don't know. That's scary. Okay. <laughs> I'm so scared of unknown numbers. I mean, they probably are going to do something for you. I don't know about that. They're probably going to be like... Otherwise, it would have said spam. I don't what know. What were we even talking I'm about? So honestly, that just rattled me to the core. <laughs> Nobody should be calling me. What? Ever. What? what, what Taylor we... Swift and her right. profanities. Her profanities. Pro profound no, your ditties. profanities. <laughs> Her profound wisdom. Yeah. Because, I mean, she had to write a whole album about reputation after yeah. going through a whole bunch of stuff. And so I do think that she has a great amount of wisdom and we should be listening to her on how to go throughout the world or at least what she has to say. You don't have to apply it to your own life. Yeah, I also just think it's cool. Like Tish, literally NYU, this, there's like a class that they teach on like Taylor Swift and her music. Like, really? Yeah. And also it's like, but I'm just part of me just to make it about myself. I was 22 when I graduated from college like Taylor Swift and I would have preferred to her to speak at my fucking graduation. But now these youngsters who like barely even appreciate her in fact have <laughs> shit on her repeatedly. You think so? Yeah, they're hella judgy. They're hella judgy. They only recently came to love Tay with the Taylor's version of fucking. Uh, fuck, I forgot the name of the She's song. She's a fake fan. Oh. I'm blacking the out. The one that disses the man? Jake, yeah. But uh, anyways, it's like, they're fake fans. They don't fucking know. They didn't grow up with her. I was 15 with her. I've been knocking on fucking bedroom doors. Like, our song was my song. Like, back out <laughs> up here with that entitlement class of 2022 NYU. 
I'm jealous. How about her boyfriend that I know nothing about Isn't showing his name up Joe? in this? Yeah, but now all of a sudden he's a star of a Hulu show called what? Conversation with Friends. What? And I only watched the first 10 minutes, but it seems like there's going to be a lot of steamy, uh, lovey sex scenes. And so he's doing press for it. And I just find it fascinating. I didn't know that he was an actor. I know he helped produce her didn't, album and yeah. was, uh, uh, it was a suit. What did they call it? Whatever. A what? A pseudonym on her record. Like he used a fake name um, because he produced the whole album with oh. her. Um, but I just thought it was fascinating. I didn't know he was an actor. I didn't either. And now oh, I just all knew up his name here, was Joe. Kissing women in hot, lovey God, sex scenes. Imagine how awful that would be. I know you don't even want to kiss in the movie you're producing because you have a husband. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it is big of Taylor to just be like, that's my man. Joe's pretty cool about it, but I don't like it. I wouldn't want Joe to like go to work and like kiss some bitch and then come home late at night, 4 a.m., kick me out of my side of the bed. So he's you know? not allowed to be an actor? No, Joe's not allowed to be an actor. That's toxic. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think I finally had an epiphany that I'm not meant to be an actor. No. I mean, I'm just not great at it. I was watching clips <laughs> of things. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could get good at the it. The evolution of this dream. I was <laughs> too much for me. I mean, I'm just not good at it. I wasn't great at hosting either I've, in the beginning. So I guess if you want something really bad, you can make it happen. Oh, that's crazy that you've come to that conclusion. Why? That you have to work at a craft to be good at it. <laughs> I told my agent, if it's not me, don't send it my way. I'm not trying to I still work believe for this Oscar. No, I want to no. land in it. I don't want to be in an Oscar project. I want to be like the gay assistant in Ugly betty and i still believe that takes a lot of work because it's a right. lot of comedic timing mm -hmm. but i would like to start as a character as close to myself as possible but now mm -hmm. i'm thinking i don't even know if i want that life i just want to be me did we just cancel the christmas movie well no okay <laughs> i can yeah I'm, i can counteract myself <laughs> i change my thoughts every day on everything i love that for you <laughs> <laughs> And Anna Delvey had an art show in New York. Wasn't in attendance. Because she's in a detention center How in Orange about County. The fact okay, so you fell you fell uh fell victim to that as well. It's called like the OC facility center, but it's actually in upstate New York. All this time I thought oh. she was in Orange County in the sunshine oh. when she walks out of her jail cell. Crazy. And no, it's in like upstate New York. That's crazy. So she, I guess, was making art from prison and a company bought all of it and put on this art show. Yes. And she like spoke from prison, like did a voice recording, but there was a TikTok of a girl who was there and she's like, there's no art on the walls. Here. <laughs> she's like, there's some tin foil oil in a frame uh, <laughs> there's a there's a drag queen here that kind of looks like Anna Delvey who's screaming if you're poor get out <laughs> But it's like, it's not a conventional. I'm not even making that up. No, I watched the TikTok. Yeah. You sent it to me. And then she finally had people. Uh, Bring out these sketches, which are like really bad. Well, she's in jail. She had to I work with the I don't give a fuck if she's in jail. Provided. I was in the jail of a fucking sales girl job. And my sketches and doodles were great. And so she had girl, like bottle service S girls yeah. walking out. But with that, instead of like popping alcohol, they were just holding the art. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like a fun event. This girl seemed like a hater after being invited, then just saying the event was such a mess. Like, it probably was a mess, but it also looked very fun. It actually didn't look poorly coordinated. It looked very coordinated. Yeah. And it did seem very fun and stupid. And I think just, like, being there is, like, energizing and weird. You mm -hmm. know? Because it's, like, Anna Delvey's art show. <laughs> and she's in the Orange County shooting Real Housewives in lockdown. God, what a great show that would be. Real Housewives in Lockdown. I bet there's a lot of them. Wow. Dibs on that show. That was my idea. I don't think the prisons would allow for that. I think they would. There's to film? Hell, yeah, there's hella docuseries in fucking prisons. Okay. Like Love uh, After Lockdown or something. And there's there's shows in prisons. Okay. With full-blown documentary clues. Like Orange is the New Black. I'm kidding. I know that was scripted. <laughs> gotcha. This is so bad. <laughs> None of this has made sense since we broke it down. That might be true.
<laughs> Selling Sunset Drama. Okay, this is good. What is Did it? Did you listen to Christina? No, on oh I my lied gosh, to you. you flopped. You I know. Didn't. Well, you didn't tell me I had to. I said, do you want me to? He sends me a link to the Call Her Daddy interview with Christine. Quinn. Quinn. And I said, do you want me to listen to this? And I said, if you want to listen to it, I and want guess you to what? listen to it. I did not want to listen you to didn't? it. You didn't? No. After watching the season of Selling Sunset. But there you're was... forgetting I jumped in season five. Like I have no emotional connection to these psychopaths. And oh. they're, uh, they're psychopaths. Well, okay. I did look. I saw one thing on TikTok where Christine's talking, or whoever the fuck the caller daddy girl is, is like, you see, like, what's his name? Pratt, Spencer Pratt, talking about how they edit people to look like villains. Like, do you feel like you were like edited to look like a villain? Because like Spencer Pratt is like on TikTok, like doing all this. And she's like, Mwah. well, that was the case back when The Hills was happening. Yeah, Christine seems like they, a legitimate bad person. Well, that's why I told you to watch the, right. this interview with Call Her Daddy because she really does portray a story that makes you feel for her. And now I feel. Fall, I have fallen victim to the internet where it's like swinging left and yeah. right depending upon whatever anybody says. But at the end of the day, I just have to remember it's a reality show. What's All of it's story? probably fake. I mean, she has a lot of stories in that from the beginning, she was set out to be the villain. Yeah. And then so one of the big uh, bombshells of this season is that she had bribed a client five grand to leave one of the other agents to come over to her and she says that's ac absolutely not true she had started her own brokerage with her husband so she had given notice at the beginning of filming this season that she was going to be leaving the brokerage but she wanted to get creative with how they still portray her and maybe go between both of the brokerages and she said that's selling sunsets way of kind of uh sending her out mm -hmm. regardless if she comes back to the show or not but they needed like a sure fire way to get rid of her on the right. show and christine has also come out and said that adam devillo who's the creator of the hills who has now created selling sunset uh has like gotten a screaming argument with her telling her to kill herself and fall down the effing stairs because when the episode started coming out that had been um re-edited against her favor she was started speaking the truth in interviews yeah. about how things actually went down and then he didn't like that she was speaking her truth against the narrative that the show so had painted told her to kill herself and, and then on top of that i guess he's not even allowed because there's been enough uh claims made a against him to the production company right. or to Netflix For, because he is the production abusive. company that he's not even allowed to be in the same room as any of the women when they're filming. I don't know if that's true or not, but I, he still has creative control over the show. And she said that she brought to the Call Her Daddy podcast uh, the press screening, which they had like the first cut of what they were going to send out and then what actually made air showing like Heather react or how Christine reacted to something that wasn't even something she mm -hmm. had said showing how they like mimic storylines mm -hmm. because they have well they lie um, and that's why they have writers credited and because it's not real that's it's what not she reality said. there's television. six people storyboarding everything that they have gotten and she said that she tells all of the women that that they're doing a job that they're playing heightened versions of themselves and if they ever actually feel slighted that they can call her after filming mm -hmm. but she said it's not not true that the producers rile them up mm -hmm. like she says every house has been permitted six months in advance because it's a, or six weeks in advance because it's a tv show mm -hmm. and when they show up to record at a house or do a lunch they're all separated with producers running in saying well we just had a lunch with this person that said this about you and then they hold them all yeah. until they're about to film and then they film for hours on hours and won't let them leave sometimes until they get the girls to say what they want to say. I mean, I just can't imagine signing up for something like that. Well, it's crazy because there's a there's a strict formula that this man follows, which is why it's so, so entertaining. Successful, yeah. Like Lauren was the Chrishell of the Hills. Right. Like the beloved untouchable and that's what i after listening to christine i'm sure there's so many elements to all of it and it's crazy to get riled up about any of God, it because imagine, it's not real right but imagine being the sick fuck who's like let me find some underage girls and do the fucking Laguna Beach thing and then take them in their early adulthood, which is a huge developmental phase in their lives. Well, Spencer's and claiming that he had grabbed Heidi. Heidi had actually tried suing him because of it. Well, I'm just saying like that's some sick fuck shit. Yeah, I mean, it is all crazy. And what Spencer had said is when they kept doubling down on Spencer and Heidi being the villains based upon something that wasn't even factual. And right. he, he has brought out 
receipts onto the yeah. thing that was like their demise on the show not being actual actually factual he said all the other cast members just watched and participated in the downfall of them mm -hmm. and christine says well it's not untrue of what they're doing to me but i can separate myself from the show and know that what i'm doing and a lot of these other girls cannot right so i mean it's just cr like you don't know what all these other i'm seemingly good girls actually know or their actual play in it it's also messy but the it, seemingly good girls seem heightened to the degree of actual upset with christine so i do wonder if they're being fed certain information i mean i'm positive they're being fed certain information just to make them that riled up when they see her because their blood is boiling yes and it's probably hard not to get emotionally involved in it especially yeah. once it starts airing and then other cast members start doing interviews and did you see what she said here i mean it's like family drama but unfolding public it's just it's too much it's insanity and i mean it's a perfect whirlwind for a reality show it's just so toxic on all accounts because i honestly don't think anyone comes out looking great i guess no. they get success and fame and money but i don't know but like at what cost yeah because it's also not not a longevity game like you can't do this forever we've seen that with the hills yeah. like they're the hottest shit while the show's on yeah and a lot of them have maintained but it's but, like you know justin bobby's still a bartender really yeah i don't even know what's going on with the hills reboot i mean you watched the hills reboot okay fascinating I and mean, it was honestly like a little bit sad to watch christine did say she's the highest paid because she actually said that she went and tried to get everyone to get on board to hold out until they all got paid Better equally yeah. and she said some of the girls which were is just a so, super normal thing i know but she said yeah. some of the girls were just so eager to be on the show and sign their contracts that they folded mm. and then she said i was the last one to sign and so she got and the most amount her. of money and that's the thing is now that she's left the brokerage started her own didn't show up to the reunion with a lot of other drama surrounding that it's like they're gonna have to fight to get her back because without her there's no drama yeah and even if the drama within the girls well they would have to make the drama between Chriselle and jason which and g flip if yes which yeah which I, isn't I don't a, know. which isn't sewing sunset i mean the show's more popular than ever so it will be interesting to see how they navigate this going forward i think if they don't have christine they don't really have a show my problem with the edit of the show is christine was shown just like push like my problem with christine's character in the show is it was always like her putting her She's foot like in her mouth Voldemort, yeah because but then like she'd get full-blown caught and couldn't justify getting caught but i think it's because of the there are so many workarounds and she was pregnant and she had an awful birth and an emergency c-section and time uh, who knows it's all crazy 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 crazy, crazy girls. okay moving on to pete davidson leaving snl i had been asking you for weeks and weeks and weeks this man must not even be on the show i mean like, like no, he is. no he was and he's this was his last episode and like i care a lot less about pete leaving the show I we barely watch it. No, I I'll probably see about 10 to 15 minutes of episodes every 10 weeks. Yeah, I mean, when there's a, a I cried a little guest. like I I laughed a little bit at Kate McKinnon's exit. So Kate McKinnon opened the show with a really funny sketch. Actually, it was an abduction sketch. Three women were abducted on a road trip. Two of them had a really good time. One did not. <laughs> And it, they just had this really fun game they were playing where they kept talking about like using different words for her butthole and her vagina hole. And it was just so funny. And she'd be like, you know, my front hole and my wrong hole. And like all those, like, just so funny. And she just had a horrible time. But then on her way out, she gets, you know, summoned up by the aliens again. And she's just like, thanks for letting me stay a while. Well, I'm from New York. And it's like, that's the last time she's going to say that. I love Kate McKinnon. I think she is a treasure. I really like her too. Has she been on this season much? Um, not or, really. So a lot of these people that are leaving, they've kind of been tiptoeing. But again, me saying not really is based off of like five minutes of like yeah, ten hours of content. I never watch SNL, but I feel like Pete he go, he shows up when it's convenient to him, and I don't realize how I don't understand how that works with contracts. Like when you're contracted to a show, yeah. you can just not show up, and that's fine. Or maybe that's why his contract isn't getting renewed, and he's. I think he he did not want to renew his contract. Well, he was on an interview, I think, with Charlemagne about him being made fun of, and he said, "I personally think that I should be done with that show because they make fun of me on it. I'm like the cold open, political punchlines. I'm weekend update jokes, and when I'm not there, they're like pizza jerk face." And he always he thought he said, "Whose side?" 
side are you on? I have a weird feeling. This is a quote from him. I have a weird feeling in that building that I don't know whose team they're playing for. If he's the joke, if he is the joke or if he's in on the joke. And I mean, that would be a hard place to be, but I guess, yeah, I don't know. I I mean, if you barely show up, I mean, that kind of anxiety might breed itself. He probably just wants to move into the $6.7 million mansion Kim bought next to her plot of land. Oh, is that why she bought that? A Maybe. Love I mean, he check. probably he's probably just wants to explore. I bet he's going to move to California. Yeah, honestly. he was also in that atrocious movie, Good Morning. Really? Yeah. Well. Hmm. <laughs> so things are looking up for him. <laughs> yeah, I bet he'll Dude, be in Kim's mansion in I no think time. he has a Hulu show, too. I mean, he's working a lot. And I feel like he always has a movie coming out. I yeah. feel like there's always a movie that he's promoting that's coming out. So he did say fine. one thing that was kind of funny on his last weekend update where he was like, Lauren Michaels finally accidentally gifted me a sock, so I'm free, which is a Harry Potter reference for Rand. <laughs> yeah, I don't get know. it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm too busy standing to wipe my poop to understand <laughs> Harry Potter references. Silly me. Hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, what else? <laughs> um, I mean, there's all of the Kravis. Oh, that's right. I literally forgot about the Kravis wedding, which everybody is fucking talking about. I know. I can't escape it. And I feel like the wedding has been since their Vegas wedding. I feel every day I swipe to the left on my phone where the news is and it's an article Kravis about their wedding. Married. I'm like, when is this wedding going to end? Because the wedding's yeah. been happening for five fucking months. It's been a long wedding. I'm honestly. happy that they're happy. And I'm so happy that they're happy. I wish that I could stop seeing the headlines and just watch it unfold on the Kardashians when it happens in a year from now. Right. But what do you have for us? Um, did you look at any of the looks? No. So this was like basically like... The Met Gala? He- yeah. <laughs> the girls, some of them looked better than they did at the Met Gala. Experts would say. Uh, I've- um, what is shocking, if we think of the Card Jenner clan as like a horse race, usually one is leading in the fashion industry. And mm-hmm. like one of them always sort of pulls looks and vibes and is like the clear winner of the event. But because this is such a long event, like we have to tally up points from across a few days. <laughs> and uh, an unexpected victory for Khloe Kardashian, who was the best dressed car Jenner of the weekend. Go ahead and hit that yellow button. Really? Yes. For our revenge body queen. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, she wound up having the most cohesive best dressed vibe for the whole weekend and she wore this leopard number on one of the nights that just had such a stunning silhouette I do feel like Coco might have taken her workout dietary restrictions to an extreme and she might want to chill the fuck out because she's stunning and snatched and it's like Pump the brakes a little bit girly but who are we to judge who are I'm not judging but like have some pasta and a cookie it's fine (laughs) Um, Or a cannoli Because they were serving both at the wedding Um, And here is what I never thought I would say Kim did not show up for me in, in the looks department In, in the, the looks outfit department. department She wore a gray look on the first night That was like a lesser version Of an outfit that she wore When she was like people don't want to work anymore Like that interview mm-hmm. She wore like a lesser version of that Maybe the first night she of the was wedding. being respectful and didn't want to show up the bride I don't think that I will is- say a thing she thinks about. One of the most shocking storylines of this season of the Kardashians on Hulu is the fact that Kim is really grappling with the fact that she doesn't know how to dress herself. Yeah. Being the fashion icon that she has been inside of this world yeah. for the past decade, I thought it was fascinating to learn that Kanye, in collaboration with his stylist, has an outfit delivered and laid out ready to go for Kim every day. And Kim said, I'm a robot in that sense. I like to go to my closet and have it picked out to me but then in my mind it feels a little scammy in the sense that skims is so popular Mm -hmm. it's then i did start thinking well who's the creative if you can't dress yourself are you the creative behind skims or was that kanye as well because i know kanye was the initial like business i don't know if it was a 50 50 partnership yeah but he owns a a piece and i know it's very different skims originated from shapewear which is very organic Mm -hmm. to kim but the fact that she doesn't dress herself and the fact that Kanye does want to dress her Mm -hmm. blows my mind I mean I we missed she missed Kanye this weekend you know what I'm saying like she and some people are like claiming that like Kim showed up at the wedding night in that bejeweled bustier but like I say nay nay like I don't think that was the vibe 
I didn't see it. Her look, like she had some looks that did pass my vibe check, but like one of the dresses she wore, I'm like, I have that and it's from Abercrombie and Fetch. <laughs> it's cute. I bought it at full price. It wasn't even on sale, but like I got it from Abercrombie and Fetch. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but yeah, let's hear it for Coco. Kylie, you know, slayed the game too. I would say Kylie and Kendall are tied for second place. Okay. And then Courtney kind of just wore the same outfit all weekend in a different color. And I was surprised. I did see it looked like Travis wore a traditional just black suit. suit. Travis looks good. When he's really been playing up fashion everywhere else. Yeah. I've been seeing him he's in a way like, that I don't agree with. I mean. No, he's been working that Voldemort, honey. It like, does. It's specific to him. And it's definitely unique and remember, remember, memorable. Yep. Memorable. Memorable. Mm-hmm. Memorable. Memorable. <laughs> but it's, yeah. It wasn't serving. What else do we have here? Um, There was one other funny thing, which was uh, Kylie posted a video on Instagram, which also this whole thing was just like live on Instagram all weekend. Like all the kids were posting. Everybody there was posting. Like I haven't seen these women post to their grids like this <laughs> in quite some fucking time. The only person who was like quiet about it was Kim, but like. With those looks, who cares? You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just being nasty. Um, But Kylie posted this hella funny video of Kendall trying to walk up the stairs in one of her dresses, and she just couldn't do it. She's, like, wearing, like, Birkenstock fucking sliders, and she, like, her feet are going out behind her in a crazy way because her dress was so tight and long that she couldn't move her legs up to get up the stairs. It was funny. I like to watch Kendall struggle a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like putting socks on a cat. And just like watching them flail. Because she's so beautiful and elegant. It's funny. It's funny. I hear you. Oh my God. What? I, you know, I love the Kardashians. Yes. Car Jenners, whatever. But I also love the Phoenix Suns. Oh, is that what? And Devin Booker is on the Phoenix Suns. And my husband has informed me that every basketball player that Kylie fucking dates ends up choking so fucking hard that their careers are over you mean kendall what did i say kylie Kylie. yeah i mean kendall so we like literally the suns were the best fucking team in the league and going into playoffs they were like expected to make it to like whatever the nba finals are and in the last game devin booker was something like zero for 10 in shots when he's like one of the best fucking players in the league and the the team lost in like a horrible fucking loss, like down 30 points from being the best team in the league. Like it's literally one of the worst games in playoff history. And now we're blaming it on the woman in his life? Well, we were all keeping it quiet for a long time (laughs) because Booker was doing so well. They were like, maybe it's not real, maybe it's not real. But now it's like, no, the proof is in the pudding. Like there's like five dudes, like one guy was like the top pick fucking draft player, like makes every shot. And then he started dating Kendall and all of a sudden he can't make a shot. And he was transferred to to another team and he's so fucked up in his head game wise that he won't even play he refuses to actually play is and he's just sitting out his contract is it because their their relationship know what is so is. full encompassing and they're so in love i would not say that's the case because they're also <laughs> no longer together they aren't no i'm talking about other guys there's like a oh, fucking laundry okay. list of men whose careers she's ended <laughs> and i don't believe in these things but like when joe like started rating down the list i was like that is an uncanny amount of people who no longer have a job after dating her like and I love her. I'm not saying that's that's a problem. Like I'm not calling her like a succubus or anything like that. But like it is a lot of fucking a lot of things adding up. You know what I'm saying? All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> Um, if you want to follow us on social media, we're at the Sip Official. We're also all there personally. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. We love you very much. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. And, and that's, that's the, the sip. sip. I just realized we didn't even talk about fucking UFOs. Well, next week we got to do our conspiracy theories because I do feel like we need to fucking. I want to come back with the facts on the Kendall shit because that is wild. <laughs> <laughs>